Swamiji, many religious traditions seem to emphasize surrender, which seems rather passive. Is that true? Well, you know, that's, I'm glad you asked that question because there was a point in uh, uh, one of the recent discussions we've had where you asked me, must acceptance be uh, passive? And there are times when it has to be passive. For instance, when I was 13 years old, there was a bully. I weighed 107 pounds. He weighed 230. Mm -hmm. He was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And he came to my room to beat me up. Well, there's absolutely nothing I could do. So I just had to accept it. But I didn't, I didn't get angry. I didn't reject it. I had to be passive in my re acceptance. But uh, I had to accept it. So sometimes passive acceptance is essential. And surrender is not passive because it's positive. That's the positive as aspect of acceptance. I offer myself up. When I surrender to God, I offer my will to Him. I offer what He wants. I offer to do what He wants. And it's not as if I were sort of with my back against the wall trembling and say, all right, I give in. It's not that way at all. Nor was it when I was a child and was being beaten up by that bully. I just, I never, I didn't even shout for help. I could have. I wasn't afraid, but I had to accept it. I bet that was unnerving for the bully. Well, he never bothered me again, I'll say that. <laughs> I found that uh, another time another bully tried, beat me up, and again, there was nothing I could do. He was much larger than I, but he never beat me up again because I never... I didn't resist, but I didn't. I didn't get. Uh, I didn't cry for help. I wasn't um, afraid of him. But Swami, where's the limit then? Because there must be some circumstances in life that we must not accept. Yogananda said, "Don't be a doormat," for example. Well, you have to do what you can. In that case, what I could do was simply not be affected by him. Hmm. I treated him the same way. I didn't cringe every time I saw him again. I, I just, I treated him just as I had before. Hmm. And uh, um, I think that's the only answer I can give you on that one. But in other situations in life where someone was about to kill you, for example, you might not be willing to accept that. I don't know. I had that dream in which I was being burned at the stake. Mm -hmm. And I just had to accept that there was nothing I could do about it. But I was indifferent, and that's where the whole question came up. He yeah. said, but in that indifference, was there apathy? Well, there wasn't apathy, but there was acceptance. Mm -hmm. And the thought that, well, it'll only last a few moments, and then I'll be free from my body, and I won't feel pain. Mm -hmm. Swamiji, it seems then that surrender, in a spiritual sense, is more of a self-offering with will behind well, it. Well, it is, of course. There's, uh, you're not trembling with your back against a wall. You're certainly it's a self-offering is a positive thing that I, I what I I don't want to do my will. I want to do your will. That often means going counter to your own will. That takes a lot of effort to go against that will. But if you're convinced that this is what God wants, then uh, you'll do it. If you really want to be faith, faithful and surrender to His will. So surrender does not mean, as we said, it's not passive. And when Yogananda said that you mustn't be a doormat, well, certainly you don't have to let people walk all over you. You must stand up for your rights. There's no humility in, in uh, sort of uh, saying after you, Ginsburg. <laughs> 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 the train departs while you're so busy being so polite. <laughs> Well, how much will do we have versus predestination? Well, as you mean how much free will do we have? Yes. Well, I think that the answer to that one is that we don't have free will, except to, except to go toward God or away from God. We have that much free will, and that is not pretty well compromised too. Otherwise, it would be easy for people, once they've decided to seek God, to keep on seeking him, but past habits come in and take them away time and again. Desire for name, for money, for all sorts of things. 
Swami, how do you decide or how do you, how do you discriminate when you're going away from God versus when you're coming toward Him? Well, you, f you feel a loss of joy. You feel a loss of freedom. You see this in the case of uh, many people. For example, there was one disciple at Mount Washington, disciple of my guru, who um, he didn't want to do everything the guru said because he said, I have free will. And my guru said, well, he can't claim to have free will as long as his will is bound by ego. And he left, this boy left. Hmm. And later he came back and he was weeping to Yogananda. And he said, I, the moods I used to have here are nothing compared to what I have now. Mm -hmm. So the world gives you unhappiness and takes away whatever joy you might have. Going toward God may be difficult, but the path is more and more joyful. It's not like going over a desert. The path, the ground becomes greener and greener. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything becomes better. Yes, you may have tests. In fact, you do have tests. But inwardly you feel more and more peace. Swamiji, can you apply the same criteria to judging your own progress spiritually? Yes, you can, but it's very difficult to judge one's own spiritual progress because we do have dark nights of the soul. There are periods when you're really not sure which way to go and whether to continue in the way you've been going. And uh, that's where it was very helpful to have a guru. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it, it takes discrimination. And if you make a mistake, well, at least you can come back. If not in this life, then in another. Yogananda used to say that if, as long as you make the effort, God will not let you down. But if you say, I'm licked, then you're licked, at least for this lifetime. So never say, I have failed. Always say, I have not yet overcome. So the best attitude then in trying to evaluate where you are spiritually is to just keep going? Yes, because you can't tell. It's, it's a long path. It takes many lifetimes to find God. It takes many, many lifetimes even to desire to find God. But if you, as long as you love God, as long as you're seeking Him, you can be sure that uh, you're coming closer and closer. And how can you be sure? Because history shows you people who finally break through. And they've always been the ones who never gave up. A saint is a sinner who never gave up. Swami, Yogananda emphasized the, F, the uh, use of the will, the training of the will, perhaps. Can you give thoughts as to how one can strengthen one's will? Well, do <clears throat> that which you should do instead of that which you want to do. And your will will become, become stronger. For example, you may wish to eat more food, but you may know that you shouldn't eat more food. You've been eating too much. Your will will tell you, I'm not going to eat more. So by, by controlling your palate, by controlling your body, controlling your work, doing what you have to do instead of what you want to do, gradually your will will, will become stronger. Also, it becomes stronger when you will to send energy to what you're doing. The greater the will, the greater the flow of energy, Yogananda used to say. But if you keep on in the midst of hardship, in the midst of obstacles, your will will become stronger. Swami, when when someone is just getting started and they don't feel that they have that strength, um, Yogananda Ji created energization exercises. Do those also strengthen the will? Absolutely they do. It's a very good thing to practice. Did you also have, a, did, throughout your life, did you, was your will strong? Did you have to work at developing it? I've always had a pretty strong will. I... I I can't say that I had to develop it. So, those of us who may not feel that ours is quite as strong have to work at... Just keep going, trying, yeah. I don't know if I'm telling the truth, I'm trying to tell the truth, but <laughs> it's hard to know oneself that well, but I know it always has been pretty strong. 
Swamiji, you mentioned controlling your palate as a way to develop willpower. What do you think about eating meat versus being a vegetarian? Is the main thing is that man's body was not made as a carnivore's. A carnivore's digestive tract is much shorter and he has to get rid of that putrid stuff more quickly. Man's body is more that of a fruitarian and a vegetarian okay, but meat is not good for men that way. And people who eat meat, they have more physical troubles. But it's more than that. It's that when you eat animals, especially the higher animals, um, cows, pigs, they have more intelligence. And uh, they know when they're being killed. I, I, I know somebody told, he, told me he lived on the route that they took cows to be slaughtered. Okay. And they were, the panic in their mooing mm. was very striking. Mm -hmm. They knew what was coming to them. They were afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, when they're slaughtered that way, they have to, they have a great fear and great anger. And when you eat their meat, that vibration comes into your body too. So that you'll see that countries that eat a lot of meat, especially beef and pork, they tend to be much more um, susceptible to anger. And they're more warlike people. India, where there's much less meat eating and much less eating of that kind, they've not been warlike. Germany, where they eat a lot, England, America, where they've eaten a lot, we've gone to war all sorts of ways. And uh, it, there's more anger in the home and so on. So the main thing to do when you eat a vegetarian diet, it helps you to be more peaceful. Of course, you have to be peaceful too. Vegetarian isn't gonna make you a saint, <laughs> but it will help you. It's not a question only of killing. Of course, that's a part of it. But you have the lower life forms always have to support the higher life forms, and you kill vegetables to eat them. It's a matter of um, not wanting to take higher life. A man's life is more precious than, an, uh, than any animal. Therefore, we should be especially careful not to murder people. But in any animal, there is some kind of killing. Most of all, there's the desire to kill, and that is harmful. We should get rid of the desire to do harm to anything or anybody. We should have that wish to bless everybody. Thank you, Swami.